Thank you so much. I've been a proponent of move it or lose it my whole life. But what came to my mind as you were speaking was swimmers, mm -hmm. athlete, you know, even elite swimmers. And if there's been any comparison studies, um, I mean, so do you swim your lap, get out of the pool, then get back in, and then swim another lap? Because is there not the same type of uh, clearly, water immersion has been used. In fact, it was the first thing to be used to mimic the effects of being in space because of the nulling of the influence of gravity when you're in the water. But that is sitting in water or standing in water. Um, if you're actually actively swimming, the resistive variety where you're pulling down on water uh, has both an endurance aerobic factor as well as a strength factor. So from that point of view, it is physical activity. But it is not the kind of non-exercise activity that I'm talking about. And what I, you have to think of non-exercise non activity as the foundation of our health. You know, there are people who are very strong but are not necessarily healthy. You can be strong and not be healthy. You may have great big muscles like Mr. Universe and not be healthy. And I think of the foundation of non-exercise activity, that non-exercise activities provides in health, in basic health. When you don't have that, you exercise in the gym Intense exercise is mostly endurance and strength. So it's an additive effect. By all means, do it. I'm not saying do this instead of that. But do the foundation first. Be healthy first. And then add whatever you want to do up to the point of being an elite athlete. It's a bit like a ice cream sundae. You know, without the ice cream, it's interesting, tasty, but it's not the same. 